Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to African Crab. I am Harriet, your host. Well, I am African Crab. I'll tell you more about <laughs> why they call me African Crab. Today, I am going to show you how to make this simple neck warmer. I have this already in my shop. It sits comfortably on your shoulders and keeps your neck warm. It's very simple, chunky, easy. It's a great gift you can make in under 30 minutes for your loved ones. Or you can just make it to sell if you have a shop like I do. Visit my shop on Etsy. It is African Crab on Etsy. And you can see the different colors that I have. If you cannot make one, just buy one from me. I have them on sale right now for just $19.99 plus shipping. I have a lot of things, so I'm doing some clearance in my shop. So if you love this, you're going to love how it feels. It is very soft. And I am using this chunky yarn from Lion Brand. This is the red. What color is this? Let's see. This here. Well, it's called Tampa Spice. Tampa Spice. But that's just another fancy word for red. This is red. This is a red color. It's a deep red, almost blood red. It's not your regular bright red. It's not like this red. See the difference? This is a bright red and this is blood red. That's what I like to call it. It's a deep, deep red. You're going to need, basically, I've used half of this skin. And this is about, this is 81 yards. So you're going to need less than 81 yards to complete your project. I used... No, I should take that back. I actually used the skin of this. This is 81 yards. I used about 90 yards to make this. This is selling right now at Walmart for $2.99. If you go to Joann's, they have a sale and you can get 40% off. They're selling theirs for $4.50, so take 40% off. You come back You come back to about $2.99. So I would go to Walmart. I love Walmart because bargain shopping. All right. And I am going to be using, uh, let's see, where is my, where's my needle? I'm going to be using a nine millimeter needle. That's what the yarn calls for. You can use a bigger needle. I like using the 10 millimeter needle as well because it keeps it soft. And, you know, if you have a tighter grip when you crochet, you're going to need the, uh, the 10. If you have a loose crochet like I do, you're going to need just the nine. Okay. All right, without much ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use a different color than the red, um, but if you want, you can use any other color. This is acrylic yarn. You can use um, wool. Wool is good. It's very soft. It's very warm. This is actually very warm, so I would go with this. The wool is normally much more expensive, but if you want something more expensive, something more fancy, something much much warmer than this you can use the wool okay all right to begin with now this is not for beginners but a beginner can actually do this because it's a very 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 simple project we're only going to be working with one particular stitch and that is the double crochet all right to start with make a slip knot and chain 48 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten sorry my yarn just got caught up nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty thirty one thirty two thirty three thirty four thirty five thirty six thirty seven thirty eight 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Now you're going to slip stitch to join in the first stitch. Now run your hand across the length to make sure that this does not get uh, twisted. You don't want it twisted, otherwise it will mess up your work. And then we're going to slip stitch in your first, in your first chain to close it up. Okay, there, and so you'll have a nice uh, uh, circle like that. Bear with me. I'm using part of my leftover yarn to complete this project. You don't need to use leftover yarn, but you can go ahead and buy a, a perfectly uh, new skin to use. And you're going to love this project because it's very simple. 
Now, once you're done with your slip stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet in each of the 48 stitches. So go ahead and work 48 double crochets in your stitches. So chain three, your chain three is gonna count as your first stitch, okay? So that is one and two. Now what I normally do is turn my work upside down so I am working from the top. And the reason I do that is to give it a nice finish and you will see what I mean if you work on the top stitches. Turn it upside down such that you can see this is the back and if you flip it over like that, you see the little bumps up. So you're working in those bumps and it will create a very nice edge, okay? So work half double crochet in each of your stitches for a total of 48. So that is four, that is five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going a little slower here so that if there is a beginner watching this video they can follow along easily. Normally I'm faster than this. I actually make this neck warmer in about 27 minutes. I timed myself. My daughter was challenging me so I decided okay why don't you time me and it turns out I work and make this particular neck warmer in uh, just 27 minutes. For a beginner it might take you an hour but it's really simple. For the seasoned crochet, this is a piece of cake. You should be able to do it in 20 to 25 minutes to 27 minutes. So keep on working a double crochet in each of your stitches for a total of 48. And when you get to the end, you're gonna slip stitch at the top, top of your chain three that you began with to close it up. Okay, I'm almost getting there, keep going. If you've already gotten to the end, stay there and wait and I will show you what you need to do for your second round and every round after that. This is really simple, you will see. And you're gonna love the finished product. It's really, really, really nice. Simple, nice, clean, warm, very functional, easy to carry in your handbag, you know, for the ladies. Uh, it folds easily. If you carry a slightly big handbag like I do, it's going to sit in there <laughs> perfectly well. And if you carry one of those very tiny ones, it doesn't matter. You can keep this on your neck or you can take it and just hold it in your hands if you want. It's very simple to, to work with. And if it's the winter season and you're wearing one of those heavy jackets, it will fit comfortably in the pocket of your jacket if you don't need it. Uh, at any one point in the day. Now, even though it's a chunky winter neck warmer, you can actually wear it uh, in the spring. This year, the weather has been incredibly surprising for the Midwest. And I know my family in New York has been shocked. We have all been shocked. I mean, across the nation, there's been some really weird weather. Talk of global warming, huh? Well, that's the reason why you should be warm and this is going to be the perfect gift or something you can wear yourself. So, all right, I have three more to go. If you have already reached the end of your circle, you should have a total of 48. And make sure you count. I like counting every one or two rows because it's very easy for you to skip a stitch and then everything goes out of um, alignment and you don't want that to happen because it changes um, the style of your neck warmer or whatever project you're working with. I like to count stitches only because it gives me a really good finished product. Okay. All right, so we have gotten to the end and I have a total of 48. Now make sure your work is in a perfect circle like that at the end. See that? 
because it's very easy to flip it and you end up with an infinity. You don't want the infinity. You want it to be just a plain circle like that. And you are going to slip stitch in, at the top of your chain three that you began with right there. Slip stitch to close. And you're going to have your work should look like this at the end of your 48. All right. Now you're going to chain three for row two, chain three. And you're going to turn your work around. We are going to work in the back end. We're going to use the back stitch only. If In crochet, there's always two, two sides of your work, as you can see. This is the front and that's the back. And we're going to work in the back end only. Okay. Your chain three counts as your first stitch. Okay. And so you're going to go ahead to the second. Working only in the back stitch, you're going to double crochet in each of those stitches for a total of 48, working only on the back end. Okay, so go ahead and work a total of 48. You're gonna work only in the back stitch. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, keep on going all the way for a total of 48 and that will complete your round two and basically this is the pattern we're going to work all the way for six rows so if you've gotten there ahead of me Keep on going, slip stitch at the top of your chain three at the beginning, chain three and turn around. And so we're going to work the same pattern for six rows. This is your second row. So keep going ahead and I'll meet you back here when you've gotten to your sixth row. Remember to count and make sure you have 48 stitches at the end of each row so that your work is uniform. You want your work to be uniform, okay? Let's keep working. I'm going to keep this video going and it's, I'm going to work in silence for a little while until we get there, so keep on going. I have been making promises to make videos for you on how to crochet some of my work. So this is one of many that I will be making. So keep on going. I will have to get um, a really good uh, video recorder so I can make this work better. I am currently using my iPhone, which I love by the way, my iPhone 5. Most of the videos I have in my channel have been made using my iPhone 5 so it works perfect it's not the clearest once I get it uploaded on YouTube but it works it works so keep on going for beginners especially please count your work count each stitch that you make make sure you have 48 for the seasoned crochet there shouldn't be any problems with making sure you have 48 at the end of uh, every row. A double crochet in each stitch for a total of 48 and you want six rows for this particular neck warmer. I'm done with my row two. I'm going on row three. I'm turning my work around. Always make sure you have a circle. This is what your work should look like. At row two, we're going to row three. You're going to chain three for a step up and then work a double crochet in each stitch, working only in the back stitch, at the back. And if you work on the back, you're going to have a pattern that look a ribbing stitch. It forms a rib like that. See what that looks like? It's really, really nice to give you that ribbing stitch. So let's go ahead and complete row three. Uh, 
I'm walking up like this and it's not the most comfortable place for me to walk because I have my hands raised up only because it's the best position for me to put my phone in order for me to make this video work. So walk with me. This should be very simple to complete. For the seasoned crochet, you should be pretty much halfway done. And for beginners, take your time. Take your time to work on this. It might take you a little longer. If you've missed something, just go ahead and replay this video and you should be able to get caught up. It's very simple. You're only using one stitch. You're using the double crochet. If you do not know how to make a slip stitch for a beginner, I have a video uploaded on how to make a slip stitch. It's very simple. But if you're a beginner, naturally it's going to look a little complicated, but it's not. Once you get that, you're good to go. All right, 37. This is row three. Keep on going. I am going to go ahead and walk in silence for a while until we get to our row six. We want six rows all together. Total of six rows. And then I will tell you what to do after your six rows. And I'm going to do this in a little slow motion for the beginner. This is your double crochet. Yarn over. Put in the back stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over. Pull through the first two. Yarn over. Pull through the last two. And that's your double crochet. And keep doing the same thing over and over. Your row should have a total of 48 double crochets. On my fourth row, again, keep on crocheting, double crochet in each stitch for a total of 48 on each row. And we want a total of six rows. 
if you've got into your sixth row before me just hold on there and I will show you what to do for row 7 and row 8 where we will complete our work I'll go ahead and move this a little lower so that you're seeing mostly my work. It is so nice this morning. I can hear the birds chirp outside. It's really quiet in the house, which I love. <laughs> my husband has taken the children out so it's nice and quiet so i can actually make this video without any interruptions normally my two-year-old is all over me and wanting to play he's gotten incredibly active so he wants to play hide and seek he wants me to ride in his little uh, buggy car he wants to watch a movie and so Normally my day is really busy with him running up and down. So it's so nice that I can actually have this time to work on this instructional video for you all. Okay, I've come to the end of row four. I'm on to row five. I've chained three, turned my work around, and I'm going to work only in the back stitch of this row. Again, for a total of 48. Do not to forget to count your stitches. Make sure you're not missing any. It's very easy, like I said, to miss a stitch, especially after you've turned your work. This video is going to be a little longer than it should be, but like I said, in half an hour, this project should be done if you don't have any in interruptions because it's a really simple project. I think it's faster than making a binny, only because you're using chunky yarn and the work adds up really fast. Yeah. Bear with me. I'm pulling around my yarn. Like I said, I'm using some of my leftover yarn and I don't have it in a skein where I can pull it easily. So I have to actually pull it from part of what was left over in my basket. So there we are. So I have enough. Again, I'm on row five now. This is, as you can see, this is really worked up really fast. And you should be able to see the ribbing so well right now. That's what it looks like. Row five. Keep on working up to row six. And if you've gotten there already, wait up and I will show you what you need to do for row seven and row eight. I have these in uh, four different colors right now in my shop. I believe I have the sand paper brown, I have the red, I have the blue, I believe blue or peacock color, and then I have the green. So, and I believe I had worked on others that I haven't really taken pictures of to put in the shop. So, if you can make this, make it for yourself. It's really simple to make, and it's perfect winter accessory.
And it is a unisex neck warmer, so don't think it's for just the ladies. This color I'm working on is a very masculine color, so the gentleman should not feel left out. This is a perfect color for a man. And I'm going to have my husband model this one for me. <laughs> He's not probably going to like it very much because it is really warm here in Arizona, but I believe uh, I can have him put it on for a picture for my shop. So I can wear it. It doesn't really matter. It works for both men and women. This is unisex, but the color is more masculine than feminine. If you are a beginner, like I said before, take your time because it can look daunting, but it's not. This is the simplest project. I believe it's simpler than making a beanie because you're using the double crochet, which is the most popular uh, stitch in crocheting, and your work adds up really fast. I'm on row six already. And we've been running this for about 26 minutes, which means in 27, if you're a seasoned crochet, you should probably be done in 25 minutes because it's the simplest thing to make. Okay, so keep working with me. I'm on row six. If you have already gotten to the end of your row, stay there and I will show you what you should be doing in row seven and eight. Assuming I have enough yarn in this color to complete this project, so like I said, this was left over yarn from a, a project I worked on last year, so I have pulled out my leftover yarn bucket, and I'm walking through some of the leftover yarn. There's a project right now I'm working on for uh, the yarn bomb project. There is a uh, this guy in uh, California right now working on the yarn bombs is trying to get put in the Guinness Book of Records for making uh, the longest crochet, uh, what is it called, bedspread, I believe, or scarf, and he's been working on this thing. <laughs> so much and I saw it on Instagram and he has requested people to send um, some of their projects to be added to his project. So I'm using some of my leftover yarn to make something that I can ship over to him for his project. But there was a lot more of this yarn leftover that I wanted to use it for this particular instructional video for you. And I'm hoping that you're going to love this when you're done. It's really lovely. I guess I'll, I'll keep this one on my neck just to inspire you. Of course, it's really warm, so I'm probably going to be sweating here in a bit. This is what you have here. This is a little bigger for me, of course. Uh, this one was part of my um, Katniss-inspired cowl, but I decided... Uh, not to make the cowl and just leave it as a neck warmer. So that's what yours will look like. Uh, the one I'm making here is a uh, teeny wee smaller because I chained, I think, 52 to begin with, with this red one on my neck. Uh, the one we are making is 48, which is uh, the standard for anyone. It should fit any neck size. So one size fits all is pretty much what we have here. All right, I've come to the end of my sixth row. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to join. Now for row seven, we are going to do an increase to create this 
these two rows here, one and two, create this base here that sits on your shoulder and allows this part to warm your neck, okay? So we're gonna make that part of the neck warmer. Let me go ahead and slip stitch to join. All right, so this is what your work should look like at the end of row six. So let's go ahead to row seven. Naturally, you're gonna chain three. We're gonna chain three to begin our seventh row. So one, two, three. You're gonna turn your work around. Again, we're working in the back side only. This is, your chain three counts as your first stitch. And then we're gonna chain and go ahead and work one more double crochet to make two. And then in your third stitch, you're gonna work two double crochets. Two double crochets in your, and then you're gonna work one double crochet in your next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, and two double crochet in your next stitch. So basically you're doing two and two, okay? So one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, and two double crochet in the next stitch. One double crochet, one double crochet, and two double crochet in the next stitch. So basically your pattern is one double crochet in the first two stitches and then two half double crochet in your third stitch. So you're doing two and two. So the first two are singles. So one double crochet, one double crochet, and two double crochet in the same stitch. This is your increase round, okay? one double crochet, one double crochet in the next stitch, and then two double crochets in the same stitch, in your third stitch, okay? So you're gonna have two double crochets in every third stitch. This is your increase round, okay? So one double crochet in your first, one double crochet in your second, and then two double crochets in your third. And this is gonna be a, your pattern across the entire row. So go ahead and complete this row with, two, with an increase in every third stitch, okay? You're going to have an increase in every third stitch for the entire row and that's going to be your pattern for the entire row. Okay, so that's my third and this is the increase. Again, one double crochet in your first stitch, one double crochet in your second, and two double crochet in your third. All around the stitch and that will give you the increase that we desire and that's going to be the the only increase round we have in this entire project okay so work this to the end of the row and then slip stitch to join one and two and then one you should have a total of 64 stitches, I believe, at the end of your row. If you're counting, you should have 64. Okay, continue to the end of your row. I'm almost there. My 
hair is a mess, so forgive that. I'm going to have to work on it sometime. I never seem to have time anymore to work on my hair. All right. We got two and then two half double, I mean two double crochets in your third stitch. And this is your second last row. You're going to have one more row to complete your project here. All right, this is the end of your row seven slip stitch to join. Chain three and turn your work around. And this is going to be your last row. This is row eight. Now in row eight, again, we're working only in the back. We're going to double crochet in each stitch across the row. Just one double crochet in each stitch across the row for a total of 64. So if you're counting, that should be, I believe, 64. Okay, that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine and thirty. Bear with me. Boy, this is warm. I'm getting ready to take it off because I'm starting to sweat here. It's really warm. Okay, that was thirty. What? Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, bear with me, 52, 
key and my yarn just got stuck. All right, bear with me. Let me get that out of this. All right, there we are. That was 52, was it? Yes. 53. 54. 55. 56. 57. 58. 59. And 60. 61, 62, 63, and 64. And that should complete your work. Slip stitch to join in the, at the top of your first chain three. Slip stitch, and that completes your work. You're going to need a scissor to cut that off. And this is what your work should look like, completed. The top is narrower and the base is wider. So before I, I go ahead and sew in my ends, I'm going to show you what this looks like. So if I wear this, this is what it should be like. See? And voila. This is your completed neck warmer. It's really, really, really warm. Okay, let me move this back up here. There we are. See, this is what it should look like. It's really warm. Simple project should take you less than half an hour if you're a seasoned crocheter. And for the beginner, this should take you anywhere between 25 to an hour if you're a beginner. Uh, for some people, they are slower. It could take you more than an hour, but don't worry. If you follow this instruction, this is the simplest uh, neck warmer you're going to make. And it's a great gift. You can wear it yourself. As you can see, it looks really nice. It's chunky, the back. And you can wear a jacket over this. I actually have a jacket somewhere, but I was going to show you with a jacket. Okay, bear with me. Let me pick it up. All right, I'm back. Here is my jacket, and I can put my jacket over, and this will go in just like that. And if I button this, someone could think this is actually a sweater inside, okay? And you can also wear it on top. Close up the jacket, and this will sit perfectly on top of your jacket and cover your neck, okay? All right, I hope you've enjoyed this instruction. If you have any questions about it, leave me a message or a comment at the bottom of this particular video. You can also share with me some of your work. If you've completed yours, share with me. You can share it on my Facebook fan page that is African Crab Knits and Crochets. You can share it on Instagram, um, African Crabs on Instagram. Tweet it, you know, share this particular video with your friends. You can tweet it, you can embed it in your on your website if you like to so that's all for now look forward to my next one i will be working on the cutness inspired cowl i know i've received a lot of questions and requests for me to make an instructional video on one of those so look out for my next video until then go ahead and subscribe and have a wonderful wonderful sunday signing out here is harriet i am african crab <music>